Boston. They live in Wetumpka, Alabama. And Julie and her husband, Charlie Knapp, live in Valdosta, Georgia. And they have three grandchildren, one who's getting married later this summer. Um, they have been married for over 54 years. They lived in Charleston for 32 of those years and worked with the teenage program most of that time. In 2001, they moved to Montgomery, Alabama to work at Faulkner University. Margie has taught all ages of Bible classes for over 50 years. Both are now reti retired and enjoy traveling and spending time with family and being busy with the Lord's work. And so I won't talk any longer. I'll let Miss Margie come up here and um, tell us all about It's Just Scraps. I am very excited to be here today, and I'm glad that each one of you were able to come and to be with us as well. Um, it does my heart good to see young ladies wanting to participate in things like this. It's, um, as she said, we worked with the teenagers for 32 years, and they just hold a special place in, in our hearts. And so we're very excited to to see them and see how they're growing and progressing. So we're gonna get on with our lesson this morning. How many of you have ever done any quilting? Okay, several. Maybe it wasn't a full-size quilt, but even pop holders or smaller items uh, that use quilting techniques uh, can demonstrate what can be accomplished with just scraps of material. My mother-in-law did a lot of piecing of quilts, uh, especially applique ones, and her daughter, my sister-in-law, loved to be able to look at the quilts, and even now that uh, my mother-in-law is gone, uh, my sister-in-law still likes to look at those and she'll say, oh, I remember that dress, or I remember when I had pajamas made out of that material. Just memories, and so, most people would just say, it's just scraps. But today we're gonna look at these scraps and see what we can do in our life using these scraps. Much of this, this information is taken from a book uh, that was written by Helen Young and Billy Sylvie back in 1990, back in the old days. <laughs> but its teachings are still applicable today. And I think Vicki said that you all had studied from this book some time back. But a lot of what I've got in this lesson came from that book because it certainly is still applicable to us today. Scripture quotations that are made will be from the English Standard Version. So have you ever had to wait for anything? I might be in the line at the DMV to get your license tags renewed. Or maybe it's waiting to hear back from medical tests that you had done. Or maybe it's waiting in line at Walmart's self-checkout <laughs> because none of the other lanes are open. I don't know if it's that way in South Carolina, but it is that way in Alabama. <laughs> a Gallup poll of 100 randomly selected individuals showed that all 100 people expected to spend some time during the next few hours waiting. But only one out of eight planned anything constructive to do during that time of waiting. Time is like manna that God gave the children of Israel in the wilderness. The manna was provided by God each and every day, but for that day only, except for the Sabbath day. But we're like, it's like that with us. We're given 24 hours every day. That's 1,440 minutes, whether you use them or you don't use them. It's up to us. We can either use our time wisely or we can waste a lot of time. We can't stockpile it, just like the Israelites couldn't stockpile the manna. We receive the same amount every day, but what we're doing with, what, what are we doing with what God gives us? It may seem like scraps of time, but time is so valuable. 
there are several scriptures that talk about time. James 4.14 says, What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Ephesians 5, 15, and 16 is probably familiar to you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Again, in Colossians 4, 5, and 6, it says, Walk in wisdom toward those outside, uh, outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer every person. So we can tell from these uh, that, uh, that God knows the value of time. But do we? There's a lot being said lately about people and the seasons of life. And, and that's a good thing. Judy Miller, the wife of Jewel Miller that created the Jewel Miller film strips, uh, described the different seasons this way, using God's word to define them. First, we have spring. Remember now also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Ecclesiastes 12 1 what an exciting season uh, you're young you have your whole life ahead of you during this season you are looking forward to what is to come you're not even thinking about getting old however many of us uh, in this session are past that season even though it's a busy season of life there's still scraps of time Next comes summer. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Proverbs 31, 27 and 28. This really is a busy time of a lady's life, but the excitement of growing children, living a life of giving to others and managing a home presents so many opportunities to show Christ in your life. Our children are growing up and our lives slow down a bit as we enter the next season, but even during the summer of one's life, there will be many scraps of time. Autumn. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31, 30. We generally have more time available because we don't have small children at home during this time of our life and all of their activities going on. This is a time that we can focus on serving others, spending time teaching Bible classes or having Bible studies with others or spending time with our grandchildren by giving them an example of what a Christian's life should be about. We still have energy usually at this time and usually still have pretty good health. How many of us waste time during this time of our life? We say it's just scraps, but using those scraps of time can bring glory and honor to the God who made us. Last we come to winter. I have been young and now I'm old Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Psalms 37, 25. This is the season many of us are in. You know, birthdays never bothered me. When I turned 39, yeah, no big deal. Neither was turning 50. Even when I would turn 60, it was nothing. Just another day. But you know what? When I got ready to turn 70, that hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> God's word tells us in Psalms 90 and 10 that the days of our years are three score and 10. Ladies, that's 70. That's what I was turning. I was scared to death. It was like, oh, it's the end of my life. You know, I was turning 70. Thankfully, I 
that I haven't found that end yet. But seriously, the winter of our life finds us slowing down. It gives us time to reflect on our life and also to do things that we didn't seem to have the time before to do, such as calling and checking on the sick, visiting the widows, spending more time with God's word and prayer. We should never use the winter of our life to say, I've done my part. I don't have to do any more about that. I don't have to worry about scraps of time. We might stop being a mother, although none of us ever stop worrying about our children and praying for them. Or we might stop being a wife through the death of a spouse, but we should never stop being a Christian. But no matter what season we're in, we all have scraps of time. Do you ever put off a project because it'll take too long? I know I do. I don't want to drag out the vacuum cleaner unless I can vacuum the whole house all at the same time. I was raised by a mother who had a specific day to do different things. You know, There was a day that you cleaned the upstairs. There was a day we cleaned the downstairs. There was a day she did washing. You know, well, I've deviated from that somewhat. No, actually quite a lot. But, <laughs> um, I still, when I drag out the vacuum cleaner, I want to vacuum the whole house before I have to put it up. That's just me. But sometimes that line of thinking can lead us to not making the most of our time. Because I could have done little things maybe instead of putting it off and then sometimes it gets forgotten. Well, we lived in Charleston, uh, the North Charleston congregation, where we worshiped for 32 years. <clears throat> sponsored a workshop with Brother E. Ray Jerkins. This was probably in the very early 70s, so it's been a long time ago. But I apparently was quite impressionable at that time because there was a statement made that has stuck with me all these years. Brother Jerkins said, almost any job in your home can be done in 10 minutes or less. You know what? He was right. You have 10 minutes before you need to leave to do something. You could clean your sink. You could sweep the kitchen floor or get something out of the freezer to thaw for supper or straighten up one room of the house or make your bed up or endless other tasks. All took less than 10 minutes apiece. But how often do we just neglect any of those and say, oh, I've got to leave here in 10 minutes. I, I don't have time. No, I can't vacuum the whole house in 10 minutes, but I can use those 10 minutes productively instead of wasting them. Using little scraps of time is how the Israelites were to teach God's laws to their children. One of my favorite verses is you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down, and when you rise. Deuteronomy 6, 7. When my children were young, we would use the time in the car to learn a memory verse, go over spelling words one last time, or look for a word on the sign and think of a Bible verse that had that word in it. Using those little moments of time instead of just throwing them away. Great things are accomplished in small acts. For whoever has this despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, Zechariah 4.10. The people in Zechariah's time thought the rebuilding of the temple was a small thing because it would not have the grandeur that Solomon's temple had had. Many older Israelites wept because the new temple was not as grand as Solomon's, but Zerubbabel knew he was doing what God wanted him to be, wanted to be done, and the people would see that God was in control. John Erskine, a well-known author, professor, and lecturer, learned the lesson of using scraps of time at the age of 14 when his piano teacher asked him, 
How long do you practice at any one time? He answered, an hour or more. And she said, oh, no, no, don't do that. She said, when you grow up, time won't come in long stretches. Practice in minutes, whenever you can find them. Five or ten minutes before school, after lunch, between chores. Spread the practice throughout the day, and music will become part of your life. He applied this advice to other areas as well. He wrote most of his book, Helen of Troy, on streetcars while commuting to the university where he taught. So our scraps of time can be really valuable. However, sometimes it seems that we use our scraps of time to kill time. Let us think about some things that can kill time and be unusable scraps. The first one is perfectionism. This can be a deceptive sin that almost sounds like a virtue. Who doesn't want to do what they do to the very best of their ability? But with trying to be perfect, we have unrealistic expectations. It hints of rigidity, and we find ourselves frustrated in the end. It makes us hesitant to delegate, and that can lead to trying to do too much and not doing it well. Hmm, that one hurts me a little when I say that, because as my children were little, I'd have them dust in the furniture and I'd look and it wasn't done the way I would do it. I, I, yeah. just, just go on, let me do it. <laughs> what did I teach them by not showing them, saying, whoops, let's go back and look at this again and practice how this needs to be done. We have failed them if we don't teach them that. And besides that, it frustrated myself when I would just take over and do it. So I wasn't helping myself and I wasn't helping them either. Trying for perfectionism can also destroy our self-esteem. The next one is procrastination. We end up wasting so much of our time. My husband worked at Faulkner University for many years as the Dean of Students. When he stepped out of that stressful job, he became a recruiter for Faulkner. He was especially recruiting in the adult and graduate programs. So one of his favorite lines while he was doing his recruiting was saying, break up with procrastination. These were people, many of them were teaching at the junior college level, but needed to go and finish their graduate degrees. <laughs> and they wanted more education, but just kept putting it off. Don't we do that all the time? It takes determination to break up with procrastination. But once you overcome that kind of thinking and doing, you realize how much more efficient you are in everything that you do. Our next one is habitual tardiness. Everyone's going to be late at one time or another, but you know the ones I'm talking about. The ones you know it's 10 minutes into the service when they come in. I know a lady oh, that we would always tell that the baby shower or the Bible study was going to start 10 or 15 minutes before it would actually start so that she would show up on time. But being habitually tardy is just that. It's a habit. That kind of tardiness adds pressure to your life and totally drains your energy that could be better spent doing something else. Tardiness affects the whole family. It also often becomes a habit for the children in that family don't like to think about that, but they're going to learn what they see us do. Our next one is anxiety or worry. Anyone who suffers with anxiety or worrying often does so because of feelings of inadequacy. It is said that it can show a lack of faith. How many times have you worried about a particular situation only to find that it never came to pass? that happens, you will find that you used a great amount of time and energy all for nothing. 
that time and energy that was used can never be brought back. Our next unusable scrap is indecisiveness. We have a group of friends that usually eats together after uh, Sunday morning uh, worship service. You should hear us trying to decide where we're going to go eat. We spend waste 10 to 15 minutes just trying to decide. Did you notice I said waste time? Because that's what being indecisive does. It wastes time. Sometimes we're indecisive because we're afraid of making the wrong decision. This fear often leads us to making no decision. And this all leads to much wasted time and energy. Yes, we might make a wrong decision some, at, from time to time, but learn from it and go on rather than just wasting time. Remember, these wasted minutes are scraps of time. Our next one is anger. You might ask how anger can be a waste of time, but repressed anger can make us chronically tired and thereby waste time. When we are angry, we lose our focus and end up wasting precious minutes and hours without resolving anything. Think of the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We need to learn to control our anger so that it doesn't control us and cause us to waste our scraps of time. Our last unusable scrap, and there probably could be many others, but the last that we're gonna talk about is excessive entertainment. Television is a major culprit here. Many watch TV eight to 10 hours a day. That's a waste of time. What have you learned from many TV shows or movies that truly enriches your life? Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to watch TV. I enjoy it as much as the next person, but there are so many things for which we can better use our time that we need to remember that the TV has an off button and it's okay to use it. The excessive entertainment can also include other forms of activities, going to movies or parties or excessive reading of non-essential books. Emphasis here is on the excessive aspect. So let's learn to use our scraps of time wisely. Now that we've removed the unusable scraps of time, let's see what we can find with which to make good use of our scraps. Spiritual growth comes gradually, a bit at a time. We don't know everything about the Bible the first time we read it. The more we read and study the Bible, the more we learn. Spiritual growth comes from repeatedly reading and putting into practice what we've learned. Maybe you don't feel comfortable teaching a Bible class but might be a major contributor to a class by making visual aids for those who do teach. Maybe you could use some scraps of time to cut things out that, that have been laminated. Smartphones and social media can be intrusions on our time. Have you ever sat down thinking, oh, I'm gonna check my email and Facebook, and all of a sudden you realize it's been almost an hour or more spent on social media how did that help your spiritual growth? Sometimes our scraps of time will find us making time for God and the study of his word and reflecting on it. Reading and meditating on God's word should be among our daily routine. Do you realize you can read through the Bible in one year's time by only reading four chapters a day? It's not much. God's word says, be still and know that I am God, Psalms 46, 10. And do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, 15. Discipline yourself to set a time to study God's word 
look things up in good sound commentaries, dig deep into the word, get a journal perhaps, and use it to write down what you learned from that day's reading. Don't read the Bible just to say, oh, I read it today. You'll be amazed at the things you'll read in the Bible that you don't ever remember reading before. One of my granddaughter's friends at Fried Hardeman is named Keziah. I'd never heard that name before, but just recently I was reading the book of Job, and at the very end, we're given the name of Job's three new daughters. One of the names was Keziah. I had no idea. How many times have I read that? How many times have I taught the story of Job? Never realized, didn't even realize the names were given, much less that one of the names was Keziah. Another example of this is found what I read in Genesis chapter 9. We all know about the rainbow and how it's a, a symbol of uh, God's promise never to flood the earth. But do you really know what the rainbow is for? Listen to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. When I bring the clouds over the earth and a bow is seen in the cloud, I will remember, this is God speaking, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And again in verse 16, God says, when the bow is in the clouds, I, God, will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. It's a reminder to God of the promise he made. Yes, it's a promise to us too, but it, the Bible says it was to remind God. He, that's how he would remember it. How many times have I read that story and taught that story and never realized that the promise was to remind God? So use your scraps of time to read and meditate on God's word. You'll learn new things each and every time you read it. Another one is uh, we must schedule time for personal prayers. I'm not talking about praying before a meal, but deep, thoughtful, personal prayers. Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. As you all know, this doesn't mean that you are literally praying 24-7. It was recently pointed out to me that Daniel is an excellent example of praying without ceasing. Daniel, as you remember, had a disciplined practice to pray three times a day to God, and he did it even under threat of punishment. Being put into a lion's den was not a thing that caused Daniel to change his prayerful routine. You and I can have a prayerful attitude that can find us praying at any time during the day or evening. Maybe even when you awaken in the middle of the night, you can pray for something that's on your mind. Sometimes I do some of my best thinking in the middle of the night. But what a wonderful time to, to pray to God. Continuing to grow as a Christian should includes daily prayers for the sick, new Christians, those struggling financially and emotionally, and for our own selves that we would use our scraps of time to the glory of God. What about on your way to work? Use waiting time at the doctor's office, even if you now have to wait in your car thanks to COVID, but use those times to talk to God. Think of the wasted time waiting for a traffic light to change. Our subdivision has a light we have to wait for, and I promise you it's three minutes. It's like two minutes and 54 seconds for that thing to change. And that, that's a good time for prayer. Think, uh, Use that time to thank God for something or to ask God for help with something. We say these kind of times, are they're just scraps. But those scraps add up to a lot of time 
that can be put to good use. Another wise way to spend scraps of time is truly listening to our husband, our children, or a friend. How many times have you been listening to someone and at the same time, your mind, you're thinking what you're gonna say next? I heard it recently put this way, most people don't listen to understand, they listen to reply. Isn't that what we do? God's word speaks to this very issue in James 1.19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. God in his wisdom gave us two ears, one mouth with which to speak. Communication is very important ingredient in a successful marriage. We must realize that sometimes using a scrap of time is best spent just listening. Then we're more likely to be able to, to possibly offer help or encouragement to the ones we truly listen to. Sometimes that five or ten minutes may be the beauty of a short rest. Our bodies need rest as much as they need food or water. But again, like with our phones, we need to be mindful. We don't let a short rest become a totally non-productive day. How easy is it on a rainy, cold day to just sit and watch TV, curl up with a good book, and just accomplish nothing? Proper rest reduces stress. We know that. Several years ago, when we had children in college, I had a full-time day job. I also took on a part-time job uh, some evenings at an ice cream shop. I would work my day job from 8 to 5 and come home, grab a bite to eat before going to the ice cream shop at 6.30. Some nights I would work to either 11, uh, we closed at 11, but then we'd have to clean everything up for the next day. So I would get home around 11.30, sometimes midnight, and start all over the next morning. I found that after I got a bite to eat at 5.30, I would lay on the couch for a 15 to 20 minute, what I called a power nap. It was amazing just how much those few minutes helped clear my mind and allow me to refresh my body for the next five hours of smiling in service. Remember, it's just scraps, but it can be used so wisely. Our next one is using some time to plan for hospitality. Do you know the difference between hospitality and entertaining? Entertaining is all about you. Hospitality is all about others. Hospitality is only mentioned four times in the New Testament in the English Standard Version. Romans 12, 13 says Christians should seek to show hospitality. 1 Peter 4, 9 tells us to show hospitality to one another without grumbling. 1 Timothy 3, 2 and Titus 1, 8, we read that the elders in the church are to be hospitable or showing hospitality. You may be the wife of someone in a leadership position in the church. Therefore, whether you are a leader's wife or just a Christian woman, we must not neglect hospitality. Use your calendar to schedule hospitality events in your home. Make a list of people that you want to have in your home. Plan ahead. Yes, I understand that showing hospitality takes up more than just a scrap of time, but you'll find that much of the preparation for that can be done in scraps of time. Things like making a call to invite someone, picking up the main room where the guests will be, planning a simple menu. Let me insert here that you can show hospitality without having a big dinner or spending a lot of time or money cooking and cleaning. You might just have chips and dip and something to drink or maybe nothing at all. You can be hospitable without going to extremes. When you are truly hospitable, People will remember and think of you for what you did for them, not whether your house was spotless 
or whether you spent a small fortune on fancy uh, foods. Remember, hospitality is about others, not you. There's one other verse I want to mention. It is found in Hebrews 13, 2. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. What a great use of scraps of time, thinking of others and showing hospitality. Next, make time to make memories with your children and grandchildren. They have enough things already. They need our time. They need us. The summer I turned eight years old, my parents took us on a long trip. My dad used his two weeks of vacation from one fiscal year and his two weeks from the next fiscal year so that we had four weeks all together and traveled from Michigan all through the northern states west of Michigan until we got to Seattle, Washington. Then we came back through many of the Midwestern states. Why do I so vividly remember this trip at eight years old? Because of the memories we made spending time together. While in Montana, we saw a ski lift. In Michigan, the part we lived in, we didn't have those kind of things, and we were fascinated by it. We wanted to ride it, even though we weren't going skiing. Well, my parents said, well, we have money for lunch. We can't afford to do the ski lift. Said, unless you want to do the ski lift, and we'll have peanut butter sandwiches for lunch. Which were the best peanut butter sandwiches ever. <laughs> we thoroughly enjoyed being able as a family to go do that ski lift and then spend the, that time uh, having those peanut butter sandwiches. But you know, since we're talking about scraps of time, you know that it doesn't take a four week vacation to make those memories. When Shelby, our granddaughter, was getting ready to go to college, she was very concerned about how to fix clothing if mom or grandma wasn't going to be there. Shelby came over one day and I showed her basic mending items and how to use them. It didn't take long to sew on a button or mend a rip in a blouse, but those scraps of time spent with Shelby made memories for both of us. Shelby's now fixing to get married and she says, Grandma, I still have the, the little sewing kit that you gave me before I went to college memories. Make memories with your children and grandchildren. Next, we need to take time to reflect on what we're doing and what our thoughts are. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Especially notice that phrase, take every thought captive. Are we truly taking every thought captive? We need to spend a few minutes here and a few minutes there to read good books that are written by members of the church. There are many good brotherhood magazines like Christian uh, Woman, Christian Chronicle, Gospel Advocate, Magnolia Messenger. Many of these are uh, publications are free. You could start a ladies devotional or a Bible study in your home. You could review books or magazine articles with some of the ladies in your congregation. One of the things started at our congregation is called Monday Morning Moms. We have about 12 or 15 young women who have small children at home and they don't work. And there's two or three of us older women who have raised our children and uh, we take turns leading the study. We meet each Monday morning for about one and a half, two hours. While some of, uh, other adults watch the children, we have a Bible study of issues pertaining to these young mothers. Even though it's been a long time since I was raising a child, small child, these young mothers look forward to having someone who's been there and done that to be encouraging them to keep on keeping on. But you say two to three hours is not a scrap of time. 
No, it's not. But how many times have I sat and watched two episodes of Leave it to Beaver, then Perry Mason, and then Matlock? You know what? Three hours of watching TV and really accomplished nothing. Now, I love me some good Perry Mason, but I need to some... In fact, to come over here, I gave up Perry Mason so that we could leave on time to come over. But still, we do waste time, even two and three hours of time sometimes. If I can encourage a young mother to be faithfully training her children to love God and serve Him, then my scraps of time, even two or three hours of time, are well spent. So now we've looked at just a few ways to use some scraps of time, but now we have to fit them all together. I'm re reminded of Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. It is important that we not spend so much of our time using scraps of time that we neglect any other part of our life. I want us to think about three more things that are needed to make our life come together to serve our God to the very best of our ability. No matter how tightly you pack your time, be prepared for interruptions. Yes, you may have planned a day full of errands to be run until you hear about a sister in Christ who's had an emergency maybe a sickness or a death in the family or someone's house burned down, any number of things, then your original plans seem very small and insignificant. Our brothers and sisters in the church are important. They need you. They need encouragement, someone to talk to. Reschedule your errands and go to them. At times like these, going to our brothers and sisters of Christ is the very best use of our scraps of time. One word of caution. We don't need to become so efficient with our time that we forget to love our family, the church, and lost souls. We can be involved in so many different things, all of which are good things in and of themselves, but it can so be so easy to get wrapped up in these good things that we neglect better things. I think as Christians, this can be especially true for us. We all have good things that we do, but are they the very best things? I work in a, a group called Friends for Faulkner. I like to tell people that it's the PTA for Faulkner. We raise funds for non-budgeted items, and my work with that organization is a very good work. We offer scholarships and we provide things that uh, instructors wouldn't have otherwise. But you know what? Teaching others about Christ or being there for my family are of much greater importance than raising money for something at Faulkner. That doesn't mean I can't be involved in Friends for Faulkner. It just means I need to look at how I'm using my time and find a balance that works for me putting the most important things in the forefront. The secret to learning how to use the scraps of time wisely is persistence. Taking advantage of opportunities that present themselves and doing a little at a time. It is back to the keep on keeping on. Persistence is a lesson really learned over a lifetime. So we say it's just scraps, and yet we can easily see that throwing away these scraps of time can have a huge impact on our spirituality. Time is a great resource. Scraps of time used wisely make for a better Christian life. So the question we must ask ourselves is, what are we doing with our time especially our scraps of time. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've been able to look at the subject about being scraps of time 
Help us to use our time wisely. Help us, Father, to put you first and foremost in our life and use our time to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to have about a 50, I know the schedule says 10 minutes, but we're doing good on time, and so we're going to take time, take 15 minute break. Um, if you want to get some juice, coffee, tea, there might be some donuts out of home, if y'all ate them all or not. Um, bathrooms, mingle, and then when we back in here, we're going to have an activity. I'll give directions for that, and we'll do the activity before the second lesson. Okay.